Stangibalisco here with part two of the vacuum tube power amplifier series, <clears throat> in particular radio frequency power amplifiers. But uh, this particular type of tube, the triode vacuum tube, is the simplest type of tube that we can use for an RF power amplifier. The electrodes in this type of a tube are called the cathode or the cathode which emits electrons, the grid which controls the electron flow through the vacuum of the tube, and the plate or anode which picks up the electrons and serves to deliver the output signal. I recommend that you watch the vacuum tube primer. I will provide a link to that video in the explanation of this one so that you can watch that uh, video if you are not very familiar with vacuum tubes or if you've never even heard of them or seen them. I suppose you've heard of them. You've probably never seen them. But the simplest analogy that I can use for a vacuum tube, electrodes in a vacuum tube, is that the plate is somewhat analogous to the drain of a field effect transistor. The gate is somewhat analogous, pardon me, the grid is somewhat analogous to the gate of a field effect transistor. And the cathode is somewhat analogous to the source of a field effect transistor. In fact, a vacuum tube is very much like, operates very much like a field effect transistor except at much higher voltages and in particular <clears throat> a vacuum tube operates like an N channel junction field effect transistor. That is the closest analogy I can offer to you and if you've done much work with this type of device you shouldn't have too much trouble understanding the theory of vacuum tubes. So this isn't really the way that the vacuum tube is geometrically arranged. If you watch part one in the video you'll get a shot at what vacuum tubes actually look like in the real world physically. But what you will usually find in a vacuum tube in the actual geometry is that in the very center there is a filament or a heater sometimes called a heater that's like a little the filament in an incandescent light bulb it gets hot you connect it usually to a 12 volt AC source sometimes 6 volts sometimes uh, sometimes more than 12 volts sometimes less but this is the filament and it's what imagine yourself looking down on a vacuum tube and it's like a cylinder and you're looking down on the top of it so you're getting a cross section of it the center is here and the glass envelope is here the filament is in the very center surrounded by the cathode now sometimes the filament actually serves as the cathode that is called a directly heated cathode in most cases, well in a lot of cases, not most necessarily, but in a lot of cases the cathode is a separate cylinder of metal which gets really hot because of that filament and that cathode is connected to the negative polarity of the power supply. That might be ground or it might be somewhat elevated above ground for direct current. The grid surrounds the cathode. It's a bigger cylinder and it's like a wire mesh cylinder so that electrons can pass through it. That grid is actually biased at either the same voltage as the cathode or somewhat more negatively than the cathode that is the DC bias or DC voltage applied to it. The signal is also applied here in many 
instances, but not necessarily always. The signal is always applied between the cathode and the grid, so that as the AC signal, for example, a radio frequency signal, varies, it varies the electron flow through this device. And then on the very outside, the largest metal cylinder is the plate, also called the anode, which receives a positive DC voltage as its bias and from which we take the signal out. So the signal goes in between the cathode and the grid and the signal goes out from the plate. The signal is always taken from the plate in a radio frequency power amplifier as the output. So that's the actual physical geometry of the device, but the schematic symbol is, makes it look like the electrons are traveling in a straight line when really they're traveling radially outward like that. And they fluctuate in intensity at the plate because of the varying signal between the cathode and the grid. Small variations in the, in the signal between the cathode and the grid cause large variations in the signal at the plate. And that is why this kind of a device serves as an amplifier. In the next video in this series, I'll get into specific radio frequency amplifier, power amplifier designs, and especially I will focus on the grounded grid configuration, which is the most common in ham radio applications. Stan Jabalisco, signing off, proprietor and operator of Amateur Radio Station, W1GV, by the way. That's, that's a V, not a U. W1GV, ham radio operator, saying 73, which means best regards. Till the next uh, video in this series, so long.